And if you don't speak Wookiee, welcome back. Today, we're gonna cover some very hairy diagnoses in this sketch titled, Let's Get Hairy. Specifically, we'll be covering the histologic features of the follicular neoplasms fibrofolliculoma, trichofolliculoma, trichoepithelioma, tricholoma, and pilomatricoma. In making this sketch, I used an incredible article written by Dr. Ed Fulton and Dr. Gardner, which you can view via the link provided below. When learning these entities, it's helpful to know the normal anatomy and histology of various components of a hair follicle, so I'd recommend a quick review of these structures. With that in mind, pay attention to the various components of the follicle that each of these tumors recapitulates to help you identify these on H&E. Again, the purpose of this sketch is to help you remember the key features and accurately identify them on a test, but be sure to check out our lesson in our scope course to view actual histologic images and to get a more comprehensive list of features. Now, when I thought, what evokes an image of Harry? Oh, I just couldn't help but make a sketch about Sasquatch. So, let's get going by introducing our first character, the Daddy Squatch who's sitting on this fibrous root ball with cobwebs on it. Papa Squatch on his fibrous ball should remind you of fibrofolliculoma, which, of course, is just a trichodiscoma in a different section. Note how the Squatch has papules growing on his face. That's because clinically these lesions present as skin-colored papules on the face and neck. Histologically, though, they present as a fibrous pink orb with blue epithelial strands radiating out from a follicle-like structure. To represent this, notice how Papa Squatch is working on making a new shawl to replace the raggedy old one that he's wearing, and he's chosen to make it a beautiful pink with deep blue streams, which kind of resemble the pattern that you would expect to see on histology. Plain and simple. Oh, yeah, recall that fibrofolliculomas are associated with berthog dubé syndrome along with acrocordons, so We've also included our Bert Hog Dubay Hog searching for some grub on the ground under this funny looking fruit tree. The pedunculated fruit dangling from the tree is a recurring hook for acrocordons, but if you're a lumper like myself, and according to Elston, fibrofolliculomas, trichodiscomas, and acrocordons are all probably the same entity just cut at different angles. Now, what would Papa Squatch be without his significant other? Probably a lot less tired, because they have a whole litter of little monsters to watch after. Mama Squatch with her little squatches is where we'll depict trichofolliculoma. To reinforce that this is trichofolliculoma, we've added a sign that reads Toddle Fun TF. Like the name implies, this is a follicular tumor that recapitulates the entire hair follicle. Now, this isn't a diagnosis that you need to get into the nitty-gritty details of memorizing fine features because it's easily recognizable from low power. Specifically, look for what's commonly referred to as the mama follicle, which connects to the surface surrounded by all of her immature baby follicles, much like this mama sasquatch is surrounded by all of her baby sasquatches. A mnemonic that I learned in residency was mama which might also help you recall this low-power architecture. Surrounding this central follicular structure is a dense fibrous stroma, which is homologous to the fibrous root sheath of a normal follicle. When we want you to think of a fibrous stroma surrounding, we'll have pink tangled vines, like these, which are surrounding the play area. Note that the play area is set down in a crater, and that's because in some instances, the sectioning won't always show the connection to the surface, which gives the appearance of a cystic structure. Oh, whoops. Looks like one of those tots there lost their trike back here in the brook. Recall that we used a brook like this in our Brook Spiegler sketch, and that one of the tumors common in this condition is trichoepitheliomas. We use a trike like this one shown as a symbol for trichoepitheliomas, but we've also included a little E in the trike frame as a subtle hook for trichoepithelioma. Recall that trichoepitheliomas appear as dermal proliferations of basaloid cells with peripheral palisading arranged in nests and cords. They can often be confused for basal cell carcinomas due to the proliferations of blue cells with peripheral palisading. 
I like to just use the blue water to remind me of blue proliferations, and these rocks lying in the water to remind me of peripheral palisading. Unlike basal cell carcinomas, trichoepitheliomas should not have a significant number of mitoses, artifactual clefting, or a mucinous stroma. However, there may be scattered pools of mucin, and this is shown by these scattered pools of water between the rocks. A helpful feature of trichoepitheliomas is the presence of papillary mesenchymal bodies, which are small aggregates of spindle cells in ovoid collections that indent into the basaloid nests, much like the swirled moss indenting into the river. It's worth noting that these structures are homologous to the mesenchymal hair papillae found at the base of normal hair follicles. Again, these tumors are surrounded by a dense fibrous stroma, hence why we've again included the fibrous ivy bordering the river. You know, I would have assumed that Sasquatch were more of a nomadic people, but it appears that they're more agricultural. They even have a cow. Moo. You may recall from our Cowden sketch that this mooing cow is a hook for trichalamumas. These tumors are on the multiple facial papules differential and are one of the key features of Cowden syndrome, hence the cow. A notable feature of trichalomomas is an abundance of clear cells, which means trichalomomas are also on the clear cell tumor differential. We've represented this with these clear, empty milk bottles to remind you of clear cells. Like trichoepitheliomas, trichalomomas have a peripheral palisading of the basaloid cells, and palisading simply means to enclose or encompass. So, we've enclosed or encompassed the cow pasture with this basaloid blue fence. Lastly, you should know that from low power, these often look like a cup-shaped lesion, which is another differential diagnosis to know. And we'll use a red solo cup like this anytime we want you to think of the cup-shaped lesion differential. Lastly, let's move to the center of the sketch, where the lazy teen Squatch has taken a midday nap on this super comfy pillow. This Squatch with his pillow should remind you of pilomatricoma, or, in this case, pillow matricoma. These benign tumors generally present as solitary papules on the face of children and adolescents. So, recall that this is an adolescent squatch, and his head is exposed, not covered up. Histopathologically, they're characterized by various amounts of two components, anucleate pink ghost cells, which are simply dead keratinocytes, and sheets of small round blue cells. We'll come back to this, but I like to learn low power differentials and then work my way into the details to help differentiate, and pilomatricomas are one of only two tumors on the rolls and scrolls differential. Ah, now I see why he's so tired. He was up all night reading his comic scrolls. Use these scrolls to remind you of rolls and scrolls, and note that the key tumors on this differential are pilomatricomas and proliferating pilar cysts. Once you've made it that far, then look for the presence of the mid to high power features to differentiate. In this case, the ghost cells are helpful, and it looks like this poor fellow is having a terrible nightmare about a ghost. Recall the other major component is blue cells arranged in sheets, just like the blue sheet that he's covered in. A common feature that can be appreciated both clinically and histologically is the presence of calcium deposition or even bone formation. Recall that calcium appears as deep purple nodules, often with cracks due to difficulty cutting through them by the microtome. We've included deep purple rocks to remind you of lumps of calcium, and given the squatch of bone that he's holding to remind you of bone formation. Alright, let's wrap up and get the fur out of here. This sketch covers the benign follicular tumors trichodiscoma, fibrofolliculoma, acrocordons, trichofolliculoma, trichoepithelioma, trichalomoma, and pilomatricoma. Fibrofolliculoma is shown by the papa squatch sitting on the fibrous root ball. These tumors are probably just acrocordons or fibrofolliculomas cut in different planes of sectioning. These three tumors are often tested in the setting of Bert hogg dubé syndrome, so we've included a hog to remind you of this. And we brought back the fruit tree with the weird acrocordon yellow dangling fruit from the Bert hogg dubé sketch. Histologically, they consist of a fibrous ball of root sheath-like material, hence the fibrous root ball, and thin basaloid strands extending into the fibrous component, just like the blue strands in the new shawl that he's weaving. The features of trichofolliculomas are shown by the toddler fun area, 
where the mama squatch and her babies are playing. This is a low power diagnosis, so be able to recognize the mama follicle surrounded by her baby follicles and a dense fibrous stroma. Just remember the mom with all her babies holding on to her and the play area surrounded by the dense pink fibrous vines. Trichoepitheliomas are on the blue balls in the dermis differential along with basal cell carcinomas. Like basal cell carcinomas, there is a peripheral palisadin shown by the rocks palisadin or encompassing the brook, but they lack a mucinous stroma, cleftin, or mitoses. In trichoepithelioma, mucin may be present within the tumor islands, shown by the pools of water. A helpful feature is the presence of papillary mesenchymal bodies, recapitulations of the hair papillae. This is shown by the mossy growth indenting into the brook. A dense pink fibrous stroma is also seen, so remember the pink vines. Don't forget that these are one of the tumors seen in Brook Spiegler, which is why we've included the brook. The cow mooing represents tricholoma, and the cow should remind you that they're common in Cowden's syndrome. These tumors fall on several differentials, including clear cell tumors and cup-shaped lesions as evident by the clear milk bottles and solo cups. Histologically, they're characterized by central clear keratinocytes with blue basal cells palisading around the border like the blue fence in the sketch. Pilomatricomas or pillomatricomas are shown by the adolescent squatch sleeping on the pillow. Recall his face and upper extremities are exposed because these lesions usually present as firm cystic papules on the face or upper extremities of children. Histologically, they often have calcium deposits and sometimes even bone, which appear as deep purple globules, much like these purple rocks. Recall that he's holding a bone to remind you of possible bone formation. For me, the most helpful features are the low-power architecture of rolls and scrolls, and the medium to high-power finding of ghost cells, shown with the scrolls scattered around in the image of a nightmarish ghost. Well, that's about it for now, folks. Please, help us continue to grow by following us on social media and sharing our posts and content with your friends and colleagues. I'll catch you next time.